All right, all right. So, Riley, go ahead and tell us what happened to you today. All right, so here's the news article that I'm going to read with all the location shit left out, because even though I don't care, Mo insisted. I, it's not so much I'm insisting, I'm just politely asking, <laughs> just so we there's no reason for us to get in any kind of trouble. Deputies called to blank high school to maintain order on campus. Blank Florida. Okay, all right, all right. You say, time, time out, time out. <laughs> just, say, just say you went to my high school, and you don't have to say exactly, specifically, <laughs> where, where it's at. Okay, so someone, came to, so someone came to your high school, and... Shut up, Mo. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> so, the the high school is in a controlled campus mode due to fights. The second day in a row that the school day has been disrupted. Yesterday, someone set a bathroom soap dispenser on fire, promoting an evacuation of the school. Jesus Christ, what? <laughs> During that evacuation, a fight broke out. Principal JJ, <laughs> so called, said in an automated phone call to parents that no one was hurt and those involved were quickly apprehended. Today, though, several fights have broken out, according to the sh sheriff's office. Blank sheriff's deputies are on scene, and an increased law enforcement presence will continue throughout the day to maintain order on campus. T what blank tweeted. <laughs> no other details were immediately available. So, yeah, that's how my past two days have been going. <laughs> All right, so what happened was, uh, to paraphrase from your article here, is a bunch of yahoos over at your school decided to turn... Turn what uh, like to, to to the set what on fire again? A little hair a soap and air, dispenser. A soap dispenser and decided to go ahead and set the bastard on fucking fire. Yes, the in in a girl's bathroom downstairs, somebody lit a soap dispenser on fire, and we all got evacuated. Oh Jesus fucking Christ, America! Oh, <laughs> see this is th and this the is reason it happened was I think it was to set up a fight because. What happened was the reason why somebody was stupid enough to set something on fire, I guess, is because that same day they had announced that the fire alarms weren't going to be working correctly because they were doing tests. So somebody's like, this is my opportunity to <laughs> light a fucking soap dispenser on fire. To commit arson. <laughs> to Jesus commit Christ. Arson. <laughs> uh, uh, I just see. Oh, we're, we're doing pretty good. Uh, Bird is in. Uh, Bird, bird moic, bird, see bird, bird stoic. Bird, yeah, bird uh, see, like this is why we need to demoify the fucking thing. Now I can't introduce no. fucking people anymore <laughs> properly because <laughs> everyone put everyone got mo put into their fucking name. No well, demoing, please. This problem. It's actually see then we get funny shit like this. It's actually my favorite bit. Fuck. So, so now, now I'm totally fucked, and now I can't fix the problem, because there's probably a lot of people who actually like it. <laughs> and I'm just over oh. here making it worse. Oh, oh yeah, 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 uh, uh, Bird, we're, we're, we're totally going to leave it. Like, I, I'm, I'm lazy as shit, and I always say I'm going to do stuff, and I always kind of <laughs> fuck around, and I, I, I never get around to it. We're talking oh, about man. the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me go ahead and, and do my little intro for the podcast and all that. I'm get, oh, you're getting a Prius? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. That's a good fucking car, man. That's oh, awesome. Oh, lottie fucking die, right? <laughs> all right. <clears throat> and one and a two and a skim -de 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 Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to the MoCast. I am your host, Mo Diggity. And joining me today is my uh, first co number one co-host, Robin. Say hi, Robin. Number one. The best. Damn. <laughs> Damn. And, and over here is my number two co-host, Riley. Say hi, oh, wow. Riley. Wow, I see how it works. I see how this is. <laughs> 
like, I understand the hierarchy here now. Yeah, get number down, two. boy. Get down, okay, number cool. two. No, uh, anyway, so, but today, today we're talking about uh, sort of like end time scenarios as and, and viruses and shit like that. As you as you could probably tell, uh, China is freaking the fuck out right now. They're uh, shutting down whole portions of cities. They're fucking quarantining fucking people. Mister Medicare. Oh, burp. Mister Medicare, fucking. He tweeted out this little uh, thing that was on a cruise ship, or, or it was a cruise ship, or at an airport or something. It, it, it's it's kind of like the wagey cagey, you know, the ones that Amazon have in their uh, facilities, apparently. Oh, Mr. Medicare's girlfriend, Jade, wasn't permitted to leave the house. Holy shit. Man, I got to go check his stuff out later on. But anyway, uh, apparently the uh, the Chinese have this uh, quarantine, this like mobile little quarantine uh, box. It's like soundproofed, air airproof, and all that shit. It's like a fucking mobile little nightmare. Of uh, it, it's it's the product of years and years of paranoia and pandemic movies, uh, like Outbreak and, and like every single fucking uh, zombie uh, movie you've ever watched. Uh, I don't know about all of you guys, but I'm actually about to lose my shit here, and I'm about to start Doomsday prepping like crazy. Uh, Riley. Uh, what what have you uh, ha have you seen any of this? And if so, uh, what's your what's your hot take? Like, uh, how, how clenched is your butthole right now that we might actually be at, at the prospect that we might actually be all wiped out because uh, some Chinese tourists apparently, or some tourists in China, decided to start eating fucking bat soup, which is exactly <laughs> what catches every goddamn time. Humanity does something fucking stupid. It can be traced back to something fucking dumb that we do. Look, you know, and, and this is and this is another fucking thing that yeah, there are there are tourists in little uh, Chinese shops who are eating soup with bats in them, and he, people are not supposed to eat bats. Okay, it's just something that we don't do as a species. Like if bat was ever going to be on the menu, it would have been on the menu thousands of years ago. That's that's all I'm saying. No, but but Riley, what 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 do you got? My thing is, whatever fucking weird virus is going around, I'm sure they'll fucking deal with it. Like this fucking reminds me of Ebola alarmists to get a little mat Maddox for a second. Um, no, you, fucking... you're perfectly in the right to yell at those people. <laughs> the H one Z, the H one N Z one. That's a fucking game. It's a good game. Uh, the H one N one virus. <laughs> Remember Zika. <laughs> Remember, uh, no, Ebola. what was it? Oh, SARS. Ebola. Remember SARS? SARS. Yeah. Oh my God, SARS was fucking stupid. That was that was a pointless pan uh, panic. There, there was no reason. I mean, unless you want to. Put Didn't your people tinfoil. think AIDS was gonna kill everybody for a while? Oh well, yeah. I actually had. Yeah, oh, just avian bird flu. Yeah. Oh yeah, a uh, uh, bird actually uh, uh, put forth this uh, uh, or uh, put this. Uh, uh, one out there, avian flu. That was the old '80s thing. There's, there's actually a lot uh, of like things that. See, here's, here's the whole thing. Sure, this is probably all pointless, and sure, we'll probably never even come in contact, come into contact with someone who's actually sick. But I'm kind of looking at the, uh, the, the, the ten of the worst pandemics that humanity has ever faced in their entire life and i'm sure that a lot of people have thought to themselves well that's not going to be a big deal but it did turn out to be a huge freaking thing but riley uh or uh, riley since we already got your take from it uh robin uh w when you first got uh, saw this what, what did you think what's your hot take on that it's probably fine like you know, we've named a billion different flus and viruses that were all like the end of the world. Twenty people died in a week. Twenty people. Twenty infants and old people died. <laughs> it's the end. What can we do? Not babies, no. They're cute and little. They don't deserve this. Immunocompromised people are dying from this mild disease. The world is I over. Know. 
I know, but here's the thing. According to the Chinese government uh, 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 scientists and other sources, they're saying that this virus has the uh, potential well, to uh, mutate like crazy, and apparently it is. Uh, well, all viruses is, can. Well, yeah, but this one, like, I, I guess specifically can. And the thing that's really. Bird, really what the fuck are sprouts? Uh, anyway, Riley, hold on. <laughs> um. <laughs> The thing that's really weird to me about the whole damn thing is that we were talking about this earlier is it's it's not so much the virus itself. Well, I guess like the one or two people dying from it's not really a big deal. It sucks for those two or three people, but uh, but it's it's the fact that in China the last couple of days there have been reports of uh, people dropping dead on the streets, right? And that part wouldn't bother me so much if it weren't for the fact that there's also there's the report the the course uh, the uh, uh, the the report that comes along with it of the people in the area crowding around the fucking body of the dead person. So that just makes the virus that doesn't seem too harmful. So it, it gives it a chance to spread. This is like playing fucking Pandemic the video game all over again, except I'm not start, starting in Madagascar. I'm starting in China. And all we do is just like put one of the, we, we just uh, uh, give it a, 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 a trait that makes everyone just turn into fucking lemmings. And they just circle, they encircle the, uh, the, 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 the infected body. And I think this is how we get the flu pandemic or how, uh, how other pandemics can start. Or and plagues. Or plagues, which is uh, freaking me out. We're, we're going to go ahead and talk about some of these things in, in just a second. Uh, does anyone have anything they want to add uh, to this? Like no one's really feeling too too much a uh, uh, paranoia or anything like that. No one's really uh, that freaked out. I mean, maybe it's just me. No, I, I'm not freaked out. By I'm more paranoid of getting beat the shit out of in my high school than I am. <laughs> well, yeah, because oh, you're Jesus. fucking. Because your fucking kids just set shit on fucking fire. Just yeah, so that's that, what kids do. Yeah, like a bunch of little fucking vandals. Like they're, they're, they're doing decoy crimes to draw. Are you going to tell me that little Mo Diggity didn't light things on fire as a kid? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, there, there, are, there are things that I would not ever cop to. Even Mini Mo. Though. Yeah, Mini Mo. There are things that I did as a kid that I would never admit to. Uh, just because, uh, even even though the statute of limitations has completely <laughs> left, uh, there there are things I can't talk about that I used to do in a pre in a pre nine eleven world. Okay, no no oh fucking my. way, no fucking way. Like the no one ever got hurt. Book. Fresh oh. off, uh, fresh off the internet. Oh, dude, yeah, like we used to fucking tear pages out of the anarchist cookbook, and we used to see if we can uh, uh, tweak it a little bit. If we could actually do something with it, make it like a recipe. They crash the lighter this into the twin soap dispensers. <laughs> oh, is is that how they did it? I have no idea, Mo. Well, I don't know. It's your high school, so I wasn't there. If I was, <laughs> it'd be really soap, weird. They just lit a soap dispenser on fire. I don't think anybody knows the method in which it was lit on fire. Well, that's the most interesting part, though. Do you guys want to hear the, the really scary, like, epidemic that is, like, one of the biggest threats to, like, the that's population cool. of Earth? No, the, uh, the, yeah, one, sure. of the, one of the greatest threats, and this is the shit that, like, really scares me on, like, a deep level, is, like, our, our growing resistance to antibiotics. Yeah. Eventually, because of the we're not overprescription be able... of, like, you get a cold and you're like, yeah, hey, just take some antibiotics, no big deal. And, like, genetically, you're just, like, building up an Im immunity and, like, passing it on to your children. And eventually, like, they're just not going to work. <laughs> yeah, I remember reading a, a couple of articles about this a few years ago about how uh, our antibiotics, our, our technology and our uh, way of distributing them has ended up incidentally uh, working against us. Because now all those things that you stated uh, are happening. So sooner or later, we're going to be we're we're going to have to uh, start back at zero with the way yeah. our immune system works uh, toward viruses, even simple little ones like uh, uh, like the flu virus or just getting a common cold. 
Which we yeah, still we're just going to luck out and it. get some like moldy strawberries again, and it's like, oh, this is actually penicillin, and it's the greatest thing ever. Like that's we're not just going to luck out on like rolling the dice on some random bacteria that we create that is actually you know a, a god virus, right? Like that just protects us from everything. Yeah, like, that right. doesn't happen. Yeah, right. The most right. Powerful virus in the universe. Yeah, right now there's not a penicillin part two uh, that we know about, and that's penicillin what, that, boogaloo. Mm. Now that uh, apparently that's a, a racist term now, so we probably shouldn't use that anymore, Riley. So uh, shut up, penicillin. Fuck off. No, no, well, no. This is what Robin told me. I didn't tell you anything. <laughs> you yelled at me the other day for saying boogaloo. <laughs> Oh, you, you will not you. take away my Pepe the Frogs, my OK hands. Oh, no, 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 I'm not the ADL, I'm not the ADL. Oh, no, 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 Cut it out, cut it out. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. OK, hey, boomer. Right. <laughs> all right, but, uh, uh, but, Robin, you actually have a really good point when you uh, do uh, point out the fact that we we probably don't have a plan B when it comes to our antibiotics not working anymore because honest to god there's not a year that goes by where i, I at least don't hear at least a few times in the press uh them talking about eventually the 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 flu shots and the 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 stuff that we have for like colds and other like low risk generally to to able-bodied regular uh you know everyone between like a 15 and, and fucking like 60 or 70 or whatever that huge gap eventually yeah. we're not going to have that protection anymore that does freak me out the other thing that really freaks me out is uh well, i know this is kind of like eco alarmist but still they have a really good point the uh the the murdering of all of our bees uh because uh, the for some reason or another the our frequencies, which our uh, 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 cellular technology works on, the, the grid that our cell te cellular technology works on, all of our Wi-Fi and all that, the frequencies are screwing with the flight patterns of the bees, and specifically the the honeybees and all of the bee, the general uh, uh, all day every day, the uh, worker general, bees, right? yeah, the worker bees who uh, pollinate all of our crops. And in all order of for, them, yeah, like, and if the bees go, we go. Oxygen we goes. We cannot breathe anymore without the bees. Yeah, we're we are completely screwed when like, it comes short to of that. black mirror levels of making robotic bees. Like that, we and we know how that went. All right. <laughs> I still haven't watched too much of Black Mirror just yet. So far, I'm really liking it. Uh, I think I got past the second or third episode. It's second it's episode's the, incredible. Uh, the, I th I think the second or third episode was the one where the mom microchips the uh, the daughter. And oh, this is in the newer seasons. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I, I thought this was in like the first season. No, this is uh, you're talking about Archangel, right? Uh, I you know it's been a few months and I don't even remember it right now. Because the first season's the one the David Cameron parody of like the dude fucking the pig, and then the second episode is like fifteen million merits, and that one is incredible. It's a beautiful piece of art. You know I might have started on the new season accidentally. Huh. I'll have it's to not new away. anymore. It's like two seasons ago, but yeah. Oh okay okay okay. But yeah, I, I really like that show a lot. It's it's pretty good. I just got into really into Peaky Blinders, and so, oh God, Paul fucking has been reading, uh, Bird Stokes freaking uh, a uh, bit in the mocast pants. Like no demoing, please. It's actually my favorite bit. Shit. <laughs> All right, I, I guess I guess by popular demand, it's it's going to stay. But anyway, everybody must so be mode. The ten biggest threats. To health worldwide, according to who? So according to the World Health Organization. All right, go ahead and lay it on us, and I'll read us our top ten pandemics because I've been looking forward to that. All right, we'll go back and forth. All right. Okay, sure, sure. All right, so no number one threat to planet Earth, to our global health, and this is controversial, is climate change and air pollution. It's not, I mean, it's not controversial to, like, scientists, but, like, to, to 
certain political ideologies. Yeah, it's, it's controversial. It's not real. Come on. Oh, no, no, no. I, I would 100 percent. I would 100 percent believe in climate change. I just think that I don't think that there's any real way that we can combat it. Uh, I guess I'm a defeatist when it comes to this because I cannot see humanity versus nature uh, ever. I don't see the humanity versus nature fight ever uh, going in our favor. I think George Carlin was totally right. When the earth is freaking sick of us, it'll shrug, shrug us off like a case of bad yeah. fleas. And, we, and I mean, we are just greedy creatures that want what we want, regardless of what it is doing to our planet. And that sucks. That sucks yeah. a whole lot. Has, come on. Climate change is natural. Humanity has nothing to do with it. No, 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 I'm not arguing that point. I, I mean, it's 100%. both, but we're speeding yeah, it up but, pretty heavily, right? Yeah, no, I, we're not. We have nothing to no, do with it. No, 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 man. I, I, I 100% <laughs> believe. Climate is fake. <laughs> no, I, I, I 100% believe that there is room at the table for both natural and man-made because there's absolutely – you cannot tell me with a straight face that our our uh, power plants, our, our uh, all of our just uh, – Giant pollution, industrial smokestacks going yeah, out into our, our atmosphere, burning holes in it, like – Come on, right? Like, yeah, there's there we 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 obviously have to be at least culpable of at least maybe like 30, 40 percent of it. I mean, well, probably even maybe even a little bit more than that. But this is me speculating, and I also don't have like any. At most. No, nah, I think it's a well, lot more than just, that. I, even like you, you can't really argue with like air pollution is a human problem, right? Like, oh, and air that pollution, is a big yeah, but problem. it has nothing to do with climate change. No, are you, I, I, I think... The, are you memeing on climate change, Riley? <laughs> I don't know, am I? I can't tell if you're memeing it. Are you memeing yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, no. You... I'm, I'm starting to, I'm, I'm starting to think like, oh, wait, are we being trolled? God damn it. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. You I see, mean, like, I... you sound serious. <laughs> so, like, good satire <laughs> if you're doing it. I sound serious because I am serious. You seriously don't believe in climate change? I I don't believe in man-made climate change. No. Ah, uh, oh, all right, all right. Uh, let's just agree to disagree on that, because <laughs> I, I kind of feel that we are culpable to uh, culpable to at least some of it. Now, yeah, whether I... I mean, like, really, the the uh, percentage of man-made versus natural is pretty irrelevant to me. I think we need to focus on the fact that it's happening. And that's all I really care about. But oh, yeah, also, it's happening naturally. And, and yeah. how much we – well, yeah, it, was, it is partially. <laughs> uh, like, but, like, man, man is speeding it up a lot. And yeah, like, I'm kidding. Like, I'm joking. Okay, the burning of fossil fuels, the, the mass usage of single plastics. Coca-Cola the other day said that they will not be giving up single-use plastics. Like uh, after even with heavy pressure, they said like it's not happening. We're not getting rid of single well, yeah, plastic. Because I it's... want my straws. Fuck you. I want my straws. If you give me a paper straw, I will dump we a just box need of plastic better straws. straws into the ocean. We just, we just need better straws. Or just drink out of the cup like a like an adult. What are you a baby? Well, yeah, the, 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 anybody that's, that's gives it. me a paper straw, I'm dumping plastic straws right into the ocean. Just take Oh my just, god! <laughs> just pick up the cup and take a sip out of the rim. All you have to do is just you know, like, you know, you don't have to. I guess if you really want to be a real, uh, I guess, adult child, if it well, then again, there are are adult coloring books. I guess the next uh, logical Safe step would place. be to make adult sippy cups. <laughs> Or better yet, we, we do cup, have... A sippy cup and a coloring book in your safe space. Oh, man. Oh, man. They... <laughs> Maybe that's a pandemic that we, we need to get into is <laughs> the adult space, sippy space. cut. Well, well anyway, we're, we're not going to have the conversation right now. But, but yeah, uh, that, that, that really don't be does... A, don't be lame, Mo. <laughs> not wanting to give out your controversial opinions. Come on now. Fuck you, man! I like I barely started to make it on the internet. Okay, I, I think I, I think they banned me enough to where they can't find any of the controversial shit or the mean spirited shit I've said anymore because they've erased it completely. So All I, I'm, safe try, I'm are trying bad. to be I'm trying to be a good boy now. <laughs> but anyway, happy good no, boy uh, four twenty. Yeah, happy good boy four twenty. 
<laughs> uh, but no, seriously. Uh, well, we do we do have uh, uh, Yeti cups and and, and other uh, you know devices that we can easily drink out of. We don't necessarily need straws. I mean, if we cut back on straw consumption and, and uh, uh, bottled water consumption, I, I'm pretty sure that we would cut down a, a very significant portion of our uh, our uh, trash output. And here's another uh, another horrifying fact uh, about like trash input uh, output and all that stuff and why we're fucking up the planet. I love the Keurig machine. You know the Keurig, the the the, oh, the coffee God. machine. The, the biggest maker, solution in the universe. The 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 maker of the Keurig <laughs> machine and the Keurig cups. He says regrets he it. regrets it heavily. He didn't know that it was going to lead to uh, uh, this much uh, uh, pollution and this much trash because this uh, uh, there's videos out there that just show almost entirely uh, giant just uh, trash bags full of almost nothing but Keurig cups or it's Probably the majority full of the trash. landfills of just Keurig cups. Oh, easily, easily, easily. Probably buried right next to the fucking ET cartridges, which now, I guess were unearthed. We could be... <laughs> Here we're on a platform, so we might as well say you can get reusable Keurig pods, in which you can put ground coffee into it. So that way you don't have to continually buy these pod, like these disposable pods. You can just get a reusable one put in your your ground coffee, fresh yeah, or you know store cool bought. Flavors. They they have different. Flavors. So does ground coffee. You can buy coffee <laughs> yeah. and grind it and put it into a Keurig. Yeah, there, there's definitely that, and I used to really like doing that a lot more because I, I, I as like a sort of like a an on again, off again, like serious environmentalist, and I try to be as serious as possible about that. It's just that sometimes it's it's so fucking hard to not look at like the side of the road while you're just going to town or even up the block or something and go, my endeavors are fucking fruitless and they're pointless, you know? It's like the most, uh, it's the most uh, demoralizing thing uh, to be an actual serious environmentalist, man. And, and, and you the know, problem it, it is a lot of people think like that and they're like, you know, I would, I would switch to, you know, reusable, you know, plastics and, and, you know, reusable bags and reusable straws or whatever. And they're like, but it just doesn't feel like I would make a difference. And because so many people think that, there's, you know, there's not much of a difference being if made. If all of the people who thought that defeated. would make the change, a change would be made. Because there's so a many. A change. Well, the, and the, obviously the, change... the problem is the big manufacturers like Coca-Cola with their single-use plastics. Well, but yeah, like, it's... You can it's, make it's some people, though. It's Yeah, it, it is people, though. And like as, as, as defeatist as I can be, I, I do try to the best of my ability to do that. Like when I was living by myself, I would bring my like backpack or duffel bag and uh, whatever plastic bags I did have, I rolled them up and I, I tried to reuse them for like multiple things that didn't involve me immediately trashing them. Uh, you know, I, I try to be as, uh, as conscious as I possibly can. It, it just, it feels like a fruitless endeavor, and and I hate to be defeatist when it comes to the environment, because that doesn't make me feel good at all. It doesn't make me. It makes me feel like I'm part of the problem, and I I will probably be a, a part of the problem forever and ever, no matter how many times I cut up my uh my six pack uh, uh plastic rings, which makes me fucking feel like dude. Nothing makes me feel more sad than uh, seeing a YouTube video of some random fisherman. Like a cutting off a, a six pack plastic ring uh, like thing off of a, a pelican's beak, and you Have can you tell... seen the video of the oh, turtle on, wait, 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 wait. straw? Hold on, wait a minute. And uh, you can tell that that pelican, that pelican has had it uh, uh, embedded into his beak for like ever. It looks like because it's just embedded in there, and it'll probably never get rid of that scar. And that that just sinks my heart, and it makes me hate humanity, and it makes me not really I, I don't know like sometimes when I hear about viral outbreaks, I I immediately go fucking take them all, Lord. <laughs> uh, Riley, go ahead. I, I know that's really bad for me to say, but just sometimes, fuck, man. Where it's a turtle, and he's got 
He's got a big old plastic straw like all the way stuck up his nose, and he's getting it like slowly pulled out, and his nose is bleeding oh. and shit. Oh, I've never seen that one. All right, let's go ahead and not not, not talk about animals getting uh, being negatively affected. Hopefully, I'll but be getting that. a more stable income Look. coming up, and I plan to like hopefully start care, moving towards a die. vegan. Diet. Riley, hold on a sec. Sorry, go ahead. I, I'm Run. planning to hopefully move towards a vegan diet if I can get a more stable income, which it seems I'm heading that way. So that's good. So. See, I, I, I once upon a time flirted with the uh, the veganism thing, except I was just, you know, after weeks of it, I was just fucking miserable and pissed off all the time. I didn't feel any better. Uh, I felt like a pill head because I had to take all these supplements to supplement the uh, the nutrients that I was losing from my, my meat, my, my usual regular meat diet and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I you do need I, to take some supplements, yeah. Yeah, but I, I guess it was just like it was much younger back then, and uh, I guess it was just screwing with my head, like the the idea that I'm just gonna have to pop all these pills just so I can eat properly, like that that made me feel demoralized a little bit. And then someone told me once upon a time that all the supplements that you take are it was like supplements are a scam, and that they're they're not really doing anything for you and. Then, Plus, they're usually made with gelatin as, you know, gelatin capsules. You're still giving something into the, the you know, the uh, the, the animal animal cruelty world. You're, you're oh, yeah, because that's, that's uh, by... Horse, yeah. The, uh, yeah, and that's a, that's a real fucking wicked, like, sin that humanity has committed... Like the the de hoofing, like you kill horses or you kill uh, uh, well killing animals for specific parts of them. Of course, the most famous uh, examples are elephants and horses, because like you know jello anything with gelatin uh, yeah. comes from dehooved horses, and they kill the horses so they can take their fucking feet, and that's like that's just fucking evil. And then there's the ivory hunters who hunt down uh, elephants who are just being elephants like like honestly if you go into like a, a, a like the, the 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 plains or whatever the african plains and your ass gets freaking mauled to death by an elephant it's probably because you were fucking with the elephant and you have no business being there anyway that's the elephant's home leave it alone and or also you were, make this perfectly were clear because we are on a platform if you have mental health issues or what have you, and you are a vegan, take your medication. You're, 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 it's fine. You, nothing's wrong with that. You yeah, need your medication. Absolutely. That's fine. I'm not yeah, trying absolutely. to like shame people. I'm just saying it's a shame that even the best of us still have to consume animal products. Yeah, I mean, whether we like it or not. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, though, uh, I think like what, what what's the word for uh, humanity? Omnivore. Like that—that's where we eat both a uh, plant and yes. and food and, and meat, right? Yeah. Ultimately, we are naturally omnivores. It's much easier for some of us to go more one way than the other, but for the absolute majority, unfortunately, uh, I don't think there will ever be a one-size-fits-all solution unless we had like a uh, an oppressive totalitarian government that just uh, squirted goop in our plates. Like when it's like a lot wants. worse now. I feel like a lot of like children and and youths in our society just don't have vegetables like at all in their diet, or like fruits. It's like they're eating like meat and potatoes, and like that's it. Like they like that's their diet. They get like French fries potatoes and like a steak. Come on, Robin. Or, yeah, yeah, but I mean, oh, it's a root. It's a root, but. Still, like, you're not getting, like, a very balanced diet at all, and it's very meat-heavy. I love Honestly, vegetables, as long as they're cooked. Raw vegetables are fucking gross. Well, yeah, of course. I have problems eating vegetables because my, my, my palate cannot fucking take a lot of them. Like, I can't eat corn voluntarily. Uh, I, I fucking I hate... I, I hate Brussels sprouts. I like broccoli a little bit okay. I'm maybe. glad we've come around on broccoli. Broccoli got so much shit, and it's just such a great well, vegetable. Yeah, th that's because President Bush, like senior, he said in an interview famously back in the early, early 90s, 
uh, that he hated broccoli, and that kicked off the "fuck you broccoli" uh, tour for like decades. And uh, you know, broccoli is pretty good if it's maybe if you want to doctor it up with like a little bit of butter and some uh, pepper, uh, or maybe some salt and pepper if you like salt and pepper. That, that's just pretty good. Like, get some fucking I don't, I don't, butter, I don't garlic, like steamed very much broccoli. Hmm. But yes. anyway. I suppose we're getting off a, a topic here. What, what, so climate change, I, I honestly think, in conclusion, I guess, uh, to, to my little portion of it, is climate change I don't think can be uh, fought successfully. I think we can do stuff to slow it down, but ultimately I think we're going to have to adapt or face mass extinction. And right now I don't know which ones – I don't know if the mass extinction event – will even allow us time to prepare to adapt to it. Like, uh, we, we, we might get the freaking poles flipped on us, and, or we might just get a freaking ice age because, the, you know, like I said, the, the Earth does whatever the Earth wants. Uh, you know, just go ask the people at Pompeii. Uh, go ask uh, Hawaiian, Native Hawaiians uh, what their uh, their the ancient Hawaiians have like stories that they were kicked down to them. I'm sure there's plenty of volcanic uh, stories of great cities uh, wiped out in a matter of hours thanks to just one uh, eruption from one dormant volcano. You know, but yeah, uh, I want to talk about another controversial uh, one, and this one's gonna hurt like because some because a lot of people were. Uh, negatively affected by this. Oh, yeah. all right, there we go. Well, a lot of people were negatively affected by this in the uh, uh, from like the 60s on down to, well, it says at its peak from 2005 to 2012. And we're talking about the HIV AIDS pandemic. And this is what it has to say so far the death toll is 36 million because HIV slash AIDS. AIDS first identified the Democratic Republic of the Congo in 1976. HIV AIDS has proven itself as a global pandemic, killing more than 36 million people than since uh, since 1981. Currently, there have been be there uh, there are between 31 and 35 million people living with HIV. The vast majority of those are in sub-Saharan Africa, where 5% of its population is infected roughly 21 million people as awareness has grown new treatments have been developed that makes hiv far more manageable and many of those effective have gone on to lead productive lives between magic johnson <laughs> yeah between <laughs> 2005 and 2012 Charlie the, Sheen. between 2005 <laughs> and 2012 the annual global deaths from hiv aids dropped Freddie mercury from, <laughs> Is no longer with us, unfortunately. Uh, the uh, from between 2005 and 2012, the annual global deaths from HIV/AIDS dropped from 2.2 million to 1.6 million. That's not much of a drop, but it's it's still a good drop. And it's <laughs> much much more treatable in the Western world, obviously. Oh, we're very this very much Western very lens. much. And, I mean, unfortunately, you know, the South Park satire still stands true. The cure to it is you take your money, you grind it up into a into a blending uh, blending machine, and then you just drink it because it costs so fucking much in this goddamn country to get treatment for your illnesses. Fucking America, am I right? Uh, dude, I, I, I don't understand. Like, this is – once upon a time when I was living in Houston, Texas, I had an old uh, – I sort of uh, uh, adopted – like someone to be my uncle, and I met him in the Montrose area, which is a famous, the famously gay district, in uh, in Houston. And so, uh, like we we I I met him through a friend of mine because he needed help with his computer, and then we just became really great friends after that. And I went over to his house all the time. We had fun. We fucking partied a bunch and all that stuff. And he told me how uh, how he ended up contracting the HIV virus and. He ended up getting it before it turned into full-blown AIDS because at, at the full-blown AIDS part, you probably have a freaking time limit after that, and that there's just nothing you could do. But if they catch it in the still HIV, very treatable nowadays. Yeah, still at very least nowadays. 
still very treatable, but it's it's a little bit. Oh, this is from uh, according to him, but uh, even though that he was living in like a rent controlled sort of like quote unquote government assisted housing, it, it, he was still able to get on programs that uh, subsidized subsidized uh, his uh, treatments. But even with that, it was still very expensive for him to pay off, like, what, what uh, little they could cover. Yeah. yeah, the co-pays just get you. And it's, it's, it's hard. So I, I guess uh, I'm, I'm very thankful to live sort of in the now, uh, the, the, you know, these days. Because with, without this, like, millions of mil- more people would have died from HIV because we all cannot stop fucking each other you, you mean it's not anything now it's in a broader happen. sense than like right now specifically right because trump has cut a lot of like medical services well, things, I, like to help people who are disenfranchised that may oh, need the well like cutting obamacare and things like that you know oh well, I, I didn't i didn't hear about that part I, I never really then again i didn't really dive too deeply into it either and of course like in in the now i mean like the quote-unquote modern age yeah, yeah, the, the more broader like, now, the past couple decades, like, <laughs> like I, I guess, like, like, well, I always tell my Renaissance Festival friends uh, this, you know, they, they, they say I could live like this forever. It's like, dude, I can live like this for a weekend, but I gotta get back to civilization because you know what I really like. I like sliced bread and penicillin. <laughs> I, I, I like running water. I like having a toilet. I like having a shower. I like having a dedicated water supply. I like not having to hunt for a water supply. You know, as fun as all that is. Oh, I, 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 I like to not have to die from the flu, which is the uh, which that's is good. a which is another one like that's that, that that's killed uh, uh, one million people. Uh, that's not as nearly as much as AIDS, but you know that was that's still considered one of the uh, ten of the worst pandemics that humanity has ever met or ever had to deal with. I actually anyway. have a very unfortunate allergy, which uh, I guess, like, please, if you ever meet me, don't spike my drink with it. But I am uh, I'm allergic to amoxicillin. Really? Yep. So I have to take like the shitty Z packs. If, oh, I, if I have sucks. some kind of viral problem that I need fixed, it's, yeah, it's not very good. It's not effective, and it's just horrible. Oh, that sucks. I had some friends of mine that's taken Z-Packs before. They did not like anything about the Z-Pack at all. <laughs> like, they were pissed off because they couldn't take the amoxicillin for the, uh, the infection or whatever the hell they had. There was just something that the doctor said, you can't take this, you got to take the Z-Pack. And they were pissed off because they've taken amoxicillin. I've taken amoxicillin before in the past, and it's yep. worked out fucking great for me. But well, anyway, I went to the doctor because I had a rash, and the doctor was like, "Here's some amoxicillin." So I take the amoxicillin, and I, you know, I get home and I take it, you know, whatever. And then I get covered in hives, <laughs> and then I have to go back to the doctor. They're like, "Oh, well, that sucks." Uh, <laughs> Yikes! Oh, that, You've that's... been poisoned by the thing that is helping you. <laughs> yeah, that, that's. That's not a good fucking thing at all. That's not that's not anything I would ever want to happen to me, Jesus. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, uh what what's the what's another one since we're going back and forth, Robin? All right, number 2 of of the global health crises in in the United States. Uh this is from last year, it's in 20 uh uh 2019. So, the I don't think they've released the the global health threats of 2020 yet. Uh, non-communicable diseases. This is like pretty standard, right? 70% of deaths worldwide are due to non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, cancer, heart disease. Those deaths encompass 15 million premature deaths that largely occur in low and middle income countries, according to WHO. The five risk factors that are driving the increase in non-communicable diseases are the use of tobacco, alcohol, uh, physical inactivity, unhealthy diets, and of course, air pollution. That's a, uh, that I think sucks. number three and four, me. Oh, well, me, me too, me too, but I, I'm going to tell you right here and now, it'll more than likely be the air pollution that does us all in. Yeah, it, well, it's making us more likely to generate these non-communicable diseases. Hmm. I unfortunately have heart disease that runs in the family, so, like, that could suck. I don't doubt that I'll be dead by the time I'm 20. You're not going to be dead before you're 20, Riley. 
But that's a bo- you- that's a boring one. Let's the next one on the list is just influenza. It's still a big problem. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know, I, I kind of didn't. I've been scrolling down progressively as I've been reading this. Uh, let's see. Case influenza. This is the flu pandemic. You know, I should have clarified. This is this is the influenza from 1968, 1 million. In 1918, 20 to 50 million. From 1889 to 1890, 1 million. And that might actually be it. But yeah, influenza is a motherfucker of a virus. Another global influenza pandemic is inevitable, says who? But experts have to predict when it will hit or the severity of its impact. While who is diligent in monitoring flu outbreaks to detect potentially pandemic strains, the world's defenses are only as effective as the weakest link in any country's health emergency preparedness and health response system. So that's why you get these things like wash your hands on an airplane, like don't fucking touch people, like don't be like really fucking hot, don't be sweaty and shit in an airplane. Yeah, if you're sick, don't go to work. <laughs> right. Or if you dab sick, when you cough, as the kids say, you know, give them a dab, dab on the haters, cough. You know? <laughs> like th- I was, I was reading one of the the twenty to fifty million one. Those germs the, are haters, so dab on them. <laughs> <laughs> of the five hundred million people infected in the nineteen eighteen pandemic, the mortality rate was estimated at ten to twenty percent with up to 25 million deaths in the first 25 weeks alone. So it went, it not only, it was just such a massive outbreak, but it was so, even though it's 10 to 20%, the mortality rate, that's still millions and millions of people globally. So even though, even if you, you got something, the boogie woogie fever or something from Madagascar, you still have a 10 to 20% chance of fucking dying from it globally. And that was just in 1918. Wow. With influenza. And we've curbed a lot of it with our vaccinations, but it, according to who anyway, and according to a lot of scientists, because like, look, I don't know much about bacteria, bacterial infections, okay? I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. But I'm going to fall back on scientific data when I don't know enough. And scientists seem to agree that, like, this shit's going to come about again. Like, we're going to have another big, massive pandemic of a flu outbreak at well, some abs- point. Absolutely, because, like, it's it's all a cycle. And with our uh, overusage of antibiotics, with our overuse, well, with our, with the rise of the anti-vaxxer, uh, quote-unquote, community, that group of uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the, the anti-vaxxers and and, and uh, the overuse uh, usage of uh, of anti antibacterial formula and all that 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 is what's going to make this into some legendary virus that humanity's never heard about. You know that they'll put the Black Death to freaking shame. And yeah, further on the list is antimicrobial resistance. So resistance to antibiotics. Uh, if the overuse continues, antimicrobial resistance might worsen until infections that we currently consider treatable, such as tuberculosis, gonorrhea, pneumonia, are completely resistant to medicines like antibiotics and antivirals. For instance, tuberculosis sickens 10 million people per year. But in the year 2017, almost 600,000 people with tuberculosis were resistant to the medicine rifampicin. And 82% of those patients were resistant to additional antimicrobials that's ridiculous yeah now here's here's something that's fucking crazy since i was listening to you i've been reading the sixth cholera pandemic from 1910 to 1911 now it only killed 800,000 plus people and it was mostly only uh, that's not that many 800,000 uh... no 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 800,000 plus in just one year alone, uh, they. Uh, uh, but thankfully, though, the American health authorities and other people, like I imagine from the WHO, have uh, you know have learned from the past. Quickly sought to isolate the infected, and in the end, only eleven deaths occurred in the U.S. When it finally spread to the USA, that was it was uh, uh, it originated in India and spread to the Middle East, North Africa, Eastern European. Uh, it, 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 
fucking shit, Eastern Europe and Russia. And thinking about what Robin was saying right there, this is cholera. In a year, it killed 800,000 plus people. If that wasn't, if we didn't learn from the past, and we'll have to learn from the past because it, this is the sixth cholera pandemic that humanity has had. Uh, if we don't stop fucking around with uh, the usage of antibacterial uh, soap and all that stuff, we're going to end up getting some super fucking strain of cholera that's going to oh, wipe us all the, the fuck out. One, not even just antibacterial soap, but the antibiotics and antiviral drugs that we use in the production of cattle in the United States, in the meats that we consume, like directly correlates to our resistance to those antibiotics. So because the, the uh, like, you know, you know, big cattle and big beef and whatever, they, they use all these antibiotics on their, on their, you know, livestock. And then we consume it. We're further res like gaining resistance to these, to these drugs, these life saving see, drugs. See, this is, this is what's freaking me out a little bit right here is cause I never thought about like the food supply uh, aspect of this. So, not only are we screwing ourselves each time we hit that little antibacterial soap pump at literally any freaking uh, uh, countertop, like at the and that's, the that's hospital. small potatoes. That's, oh, that's not small the biggest potatoes. deal. Oh no, it's not. It's just a it's just a, a, a crap sandwich that we're just stacking layer on layer on layer of crap on, and we're we're inadvertently, unknowingly taking huge bites. Of it yeah, until that's we the get mayonnaise to the on our crap sandwich. Like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh. But, stop uh, putting this image in the head. Stop. But anyway, uh, uh, go ahead, give us another one, uh, Robin. All right, let me uh, pull it back up here. Because all of this is basically le leading up to the Black Death and all the other really, really good ones. This is actually what's freaking me out is that. We haven't gotten to the Black Death, and there has been so many more just uh, terrible... Well, here we go. Uh, number six on the list. I did skip number four because it's just fragile settings in the world, right? Bad access to healthcare, whatever. We, like, we understand yeah. that's a problem. But we could talk about it. That's another episode on its own, okay? <laughs> but oh, number six time. on the list, Ebola and high-threat pathogens. So when it comes to responding to a high-threat pathogen such as Ebola, context is critical, according to WHO. The way a high-threat pathogen spreads and impacts a rural area might look very different from the way it would look in urban areas or active conflict zones, making it difficult for health systems and governments to prepare for an effective emergency response. Whose current, uh, who's current watch list of high-threat pathogens include Ebola, Zika, SARS, and Disease X, a placeholder name for any unknown pathogen that can cause an epidemic. Such as the current one that we're dealing with. What is it? Uh, the Car Carnano virus? What, is that what that's called? Uh, yeah. L let me look at that name again. Uh, the the uh, Corona Cor Corona Corona uh, Corona uh, virus. Coronavirus. Yeah. Yeah. That would that would fall under disease X, right? Like a, another disease that could cause an epidemic. Jesus. Like we just Christ. these are just diseases that we don't like. It's a placeholder spot on the list. Number six is just for any disease that we're currently watching or don't even know about yet that could just show up and just go, goodbye, you're fucked. Yeah, goodbye, see, everyone. It's been fun. Yeah, see, this this is why I, I, I freak out about a little bit about the uh, the climate change stuff because, once again, that's, a, that's another thing, a uh, middle finger. Uh, that's another huge middle finger from the environment uh, to humanity. Once it decides, like you know, it, it, once it decides we're it's sick of us, we're we're gone. It might not be a volcano or an earthquake. It could be a virus. Like you, you, you probably need to imagine or global what, tsunamis from the the melting of our ice caps. Like oh, well, global tsunami. Oh man, now wouldn't that be like a thing that humanity would have to adapt to? Uh, or die on, you right, know, like, like, it, like Venice is on the, the verge of just being completely submerged, right? Like our, our, at some point our coasts will be at risk, right? We're going to have to move inland. If the, if that's a road we go down, if we don't alleviate some of this climate, like a lot of these climate issues that we have, right? Like we're, we need to move inland and that's like a temporary fix, but also like the weather is going to be much more temperate, like in the hundreds of more temperate, right? Like, 
Oh, uh, you're you're talking about that? You're talking about Hurricane Katrina's and Rita's and Ike's all day, every day? Or not uh, not all day, every day, excuse me. Every hurricane season. That's, yeah, a huge, all, all hurricane season long. It's just, it's going to be fucking Andrews. It's going to be it, it just everything, like the worst freaking storms to hit Florida and and uh, and uh, New Orleans. I'm talking about shit. like yeah, like mid mid inland cities being like coasts at one point. Like oh, big time. And and the the worst part is as as uh, as, as uh, I forgot exactly what I was going to say. As the the waves keep going, it's going to sink that land that we used to inhabit. And so we're going to we're looking at new coastlines over and over and over. Until eventually, we just all we're all lands just submerged, and it, we're either looking at uh, the greatest migration that humanity's uh, seen in the modern age, or we're looking at well, like let's say for context, Western extinction, and that Western extinction means like you know Mexico, South America, uh, North America, Central Texas, anything uh, lower on the sea level, yeah. Uh, Cuba's fucking gone. Uh, Hawaii is gone. Uh, you know, oh, destroyed. Uh, yeah, and we're we're even looking at maybe maybe parts of Canada uh, might might well, survive. Parts of the U.S., parts of Canada. Yeah, like they're just like yeah, you know, very inland, high elevation areas. Well, e- eventually, are, eventually, like if you have mountain, a bug out plan, and if your bug out plan involves like you know climate, you know the the inevitability of a a climate crisis like you should be looking at like these are the zones we're going to right like these high elevation points like like large hills to mountains like oh, far yeah. inland like yeah well once we hit the the one once it hits the freaking rockies it, if if it came from the east it, it would stop if it came from the west it would stop but then we're also looking at nothing but mountain ranges and uh, the grids would go down of course, uh, oh, of course, because we, like we're totally fucked. Though I would love to see this the uh, the adaptability of humanity put to the test with the mountain range. Though I want to believe in the Doctor Who, you know, like humans are just they're there forever, like they just fucking survive. I want, like, I hope that is true. All right, I hope for the future that hum- humans can just make it. Well, we can it- do it. Yeah, see, that's actually a, a, a thing that I really disagree with the uh, scientific alarmists on when they say humanity has like a, a ticking clock on it. You know, they're, they're, with, with uh, one of the things that's great about our species is that we're wicked, wicked adaptive. Uh, we can uh, adapt if, if we're just giving it if we're just given a small enough chance and a long enough win- time uh, to uh, or a long enough window. Uh, to adapt, we can overcome it. It'll just suck, and we'll be a shadow of our former selves. We might, well, who am I kidding? Uh, of course, we'll see our former glory again. Like, you know, Rome wasn't It'll built be in a, a day. reset button. It'll definitely be a reset button, but, you know. Have you played uh, Assassin's Creed, like the Assassin's Creed 3, like up to that point? Uh, yeah, I, I love that series. It gets to the, um, the, the 2012 scenario, and Desmond has the choice to, like, reset like he can hit the reset button and you know retreat to the caves the world ends and then he comes back up and like is the 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 god right and then like everything just happens over and over again in a loop or he can you know not press this button and then you know who knows what's gonna happen like shit's gonna go down and maybe civilization survives maybe not who knows question mark like it's like that level of shit where it's like you know, we're you know the the few humans that survive are going to become the gods of the next generation. You know, like yeah, you know it's just really, going to be a big reset. Yeah, you know what really kind of sucks about that part of the game is that uh, well, no, number one, I I hated how the game treated Desmond because I, I I like Desmond a lot as a character. He he's one of my favorite ones, right? But they they tell you the 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 choice at the end of the game, but they immediately put you in front of uh, the one choice and it immediately gives you the prompt to go ahead and just press X to, to awesome or, or whatever. 
and it doesn't really I, I don't know maybe it's maybe it's uh, uh, my fault for not being adventurous enough or curious enough but I didn't know that you can literally just walk away from it I kind of thought that the game sort of told me I don't really have a choice that this was sort of the natural progression of uh that's it of the it's game. all the you can do yeah so like uh, and, and uh, 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 oh who, who the fuck uh, made Assassin's Creed Ubisoft uh, they said that they they went with the uh, that storyline, the after Desmond died storyline, because they looked at the data that they collected from uh, the, the the gamers, the people that played the game, and they said they overwhelmingly uh, decided to uh, uh, go with the the one that was presented in front of them, and no one uh, really nobody picked option B. And I, I thought that kind of sucked a little bit because I, I liked the other option. You know, like, let me do the other thing. I don't want Desmond to die. That sucks. <laughs> but anyway, I guess let's go ahead and wrap this up since we are at the... Da, 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 103. I do oh, want to okay. mention this one more, by the way. Yeah, sure. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, I'll, get, I'll, I'll do the, the last two really good ones, and you do yourself, like, a, a couple of really good ones. Yeah. Uh, another big one on the global health uh, crises... Uh, vaccine hesitancy. Yeah. Currently, vaccination prevents between 2 and 3 million deaths per year, but it could potentially prevent another 1.5 million. So another, you know, 0.5, you know, times... Am I doing that right? Yeah, another 0.5 times the, the number, right? Between 2 and 3 million, but it could prevent 1.5 million more deaths if more people got vaccinated. And exactly. what I mean by that is more people who are eligible to be back because there's some people who are immunocompromised and cannot and have to rely on the the uh, the herd immunity. Yeah, and that's that's one thing that really scares me about like a, a, a if I recall it correctly, herd immunity means like there's enough of a buffer zone between you know the healthy and the unhealthy that it will won't reach you. Is that am I remembering that correctly? Yes, for the people who can't okay. take vaccines because the vaccines themselves would, would kill the, the recipient, um, the, the rest of the population is vaccinated uh, adequately enough to prevent the, the unvaccinated uh, from, from catching this disease. See, what really freaks me out about the, uh, the, the, the anti-vaxxer thing is like it, it kind of only works if all of us do it. If enough people don't take the vaccine it knocks the effectiveness of the vaccine of the vaccinated uh down quite significantly because they're constantly like you, you have to real i guess we all have to realize that our bodies our immune systems are constantly in endless endless war with some bacteria with some virus with some fucking nastiness uh, in our system and so to tax it so much by not uh, by a uh, uh, sort of a, uh, not really yelling at the anti vaxxers enough, uh, that 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 bother that freaks me right the hell out. Uh, you know, that boomers, you remember those chicken pox parties you guys had? It's literally yeah. the same shit. We're just we're just putting a little bit of the virus in them so that way they become immune to it. It's the same thing. Yeah, it's it's really not that big a deal, and it really pisses me off when people are all like, well, I have to really question, like, why this is in here. It's like, dude, I don't like the fact that we have so much why mercury. Why is there mercury? <laughs> yeah, like, I don't, I don't like the fact that there's mercury in there. And an ultra-liberal progressive Bill Maher is on the exact same page that I am, so any of you who are about to comment and go, yeah, 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 you know, no, a, a lot of people are asking just, and there's nothing wrong with asking specific questions, you know, there's just some nastiness in there well, that I would not, love well, to it's not that it is mercury, it's a compound that has mercury in the name, but the people that are analyzing these vaccinations don't understand the language behind it, and they refuse to fall back on professional opinion because they uh, have to uh, have some kind of... Um, They're lying uh, to me. Yeah, they have to have... Uh, what's what's the word? A, um, An ulterior motive? No, 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 no. When you, when you have to observe something with your own eyes in order to believe it. Um, oh, 
I, I think that's I pretty much just fall back on saying see it before I believe it. I don't know what the <sighs> official term uh, is for that though. It's not epistemology. Maybe it is. Who knows? It's not epistemology. I can't think of the word, but yeah, the the idea that you have to uh, to to have a depth of understanding of something from your uh, personal experience in order to believe it. Yeah, that, that's Which means that you can't insane. fall back on medical experience because their personal experience is not your personal experience, and they could be lying to you. Yeah, so that leads to too much unnatural paranoia and mistrust of your fellow person because, you know... If and also thinking, not how a fucking society works. Yeah, if we if we had that, if that idea of that mindset was prevalent, we would all have been extinct a long freaking time ago because you just have to put your faith, uh, some faith, in, in people who are doctors and people who uh, work around the clock to try to find solution for uh, solutions for extremely complicated medical problems, you know? Like, because I'm not going to understand half the medical jar. Even when I was much, much younger, I tried picking up books and, like, you know, re like, here's, here's how it is for, like, John Q. Nobody who doesn't aspire to be a doctor, right? Say you're trying to expand your knowledge medically, right? Without the proper training uh, for said for said uh uh uh, uh blah, blah, blah. without the proper medical training you're not really going to understand any of the term well a lot of the terminology because it's it's kind of like uh legalese you know like if you're not a lawyer you're not going to understand a lot of these terms and there's sometimes there's there's not so much double speak but there's there's stuff that sounds essentially the same but it, once you look look uh, uh once you look at it sort of specifically a little bit closer you realize that it deviates way off the path that you thought that was going to be and you're uh, that you thought was going to go down on and you're just simply not going to understand that until you have the proper training and not saying that you have to have training in, in order to understand 100 percent I'm just saying you're more than likely going to fail in understanding that. So looking at a lot of these uh, terms and all that, it's going to just fly over your head. Or you're just going to get frustrated and say, fuck it, and just give up. But anyway, there there was a point I guess I was making, but I kind of deviated off that. Anyway, uh, let, let's go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at one, one or two more things that I want to read off real quick. And I, I guess we'll just end on that. Uh, Robin, do you have one more you want to go ahead and read off? Uh, yes. Uh, one more would be... Um, dengue fever, or deng, uh, which is uh, about 40% of the world is at risk of becoming infected with deng. Deng, uh, a, a yeah, mosquito-borne yeah. illness that infects 390 million people each year and kills up to 20% of people who form a severe version of this disease. I've heard a lot of uh, really just horrific stories from, uh, uh, well, like I, I guess kicked down in articles and, and other stuff on the net uh, from soldiers who survived the, uh, the, the, I guess the African theater uh, portion of world war two and people who mm -hmm. go, go into these, uh, Sort of like a more, I guess, jungle infested. Uh, oh shit! There's a, there's a whole bunch of people. <laughs> Hang on one sec. Mark that one down there. <laughs> yeah, mark this one down definitely. Uh, Fergalicious. Man, a friend of mine told me to go ahead and just have the the, the task bar pop up for you whenever you want to like uh, access your your stuff. And honestly, it's more of a bother than it is a help than it is helpful because I'm constantly having to wait like three seconds for the stupid thing to pop up, and uh, it keeps like going back and forth. It's just I don't I don't know. It, it bothers the shit out of me. It feels like I'm accumulatively wasting time doing other when I'm trying to do other stuff when I used to be able just to click on things right oh, then I and love there. Oh, I love taskbar. Oh yeah, I like the aesthetic up. of it. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool. I, I like it well enough. But uh, all right, all right, all right. I 
I think my niece is finally chilled out and calmed down because she just sort of has this uh, thing where she just has to scream about something. <laughs> Sometimes, not all the time. I feel that way. Oh, I feel that way too. <laughs> yeah, Robin I, has. I also want to. I, I honestly do like. I, I wish we had like a time where we could just periodically scream to the heavens, just to release some anger and some tension. Man, like we'd probably be a better species. For, <laughs> no, no, no. No one, no one needs another fucking dude uh, screaming at the top of his lungs uh, about yeah, shit. Let's get flamenco in here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, like I was saying, there's a lot of uh, 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 stories from soldiers that talk about uh, the dengue, the 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 dengue or whatever. What was it called again? Probably something, something like, that. like that. Oh yeah, yeah. When when they were talking about that uh, virus, they would talk about how like they would watch their uh, their compatriots just uh, sit there and just sweat like fucking crazy have convulsions and then they wake up in the morning and their friend was dead and uh how they said it was a, uh, it was sort of like a horrific it was a really bad way to go like that that's like what really contributed to a lot of ptsd that and a, a lot of the the attacks in the jungle which i i can't no, I imagine read a while ago that they're the the plan for mosquitoes is to uh release these uh mosquitoes that are infertile uh and i read they, about that in english class yeah and when they attempt to to procreate with another mosquito it renders the other mosquito infertile as well and the idea of this is that eventually it will destroy their population completely because they have no um um importance to our to our ecological system Damn, yeah. you know, I remember reading about that too, but I kind of, I, I kind of uh, uh, brushed it off as sort of like a, uh, as something that was th that might have happened, but just never happened. But uh, I wouldn't yeah, actually ever really came implement to that. Uh, we we never implemented that. I, not sucks. as far as I know. We should because, like I said, like there's no damage to our environment done by eradicating all mosquitoes. They do nothing for the population control of other insects, like. They're they're just pointless bugs. Like, and the animals that eat bugs have like a huge uh, 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 food table to choose from. Like the, the like frogs, for instance, uh, frogs and other uh, uh, amphibians. They primarily eat a lot of bugs, and they 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 don't have to have mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, and I think cockroaches. I I don't know if cockroaches really do serve a purpose other than to be in. In an infestation, which is they may other. they may serve a purpose, but but uh, mosquitoes do not serve any environmental purpose as as far as I know anyway. I, I'm not claiming to be an expert here. Uh, man, if I'm dude, wrong, correct me at some point. Man, dude, fuck mosquitoes all day every day. <laughs> I'm all highly right. allergic, so fuck that shit. Get them out of here. You can be allergic to mosquitoes. I have very bad reactions. If I get stung by one, it's like my limb is out of commission for like a month. Oh, wow. Holy shit. Damn. Yeah, I don't go I, outside. I've, I've never... Damn, I've never heard that one. I've never heard of that one. That's that's a first for me. And it leaves humongous scars. Yeah, it's not it's not pleasant. All right. Let me go ahead and give you. Let me go ahead and wrap this up, and I'll give you guys the last. Uh, I well, I thought it was two, but apparently it's just two into one huge fuck. Like a, a sort of part one, part two for humanity. The bubonic plague. Uh, the first one is the plague of Justinian, which killed twenty five million people. Uh, let's Jesus. see. Jesus. Generally regarded as the first recorded incident of the bubonic plague. The plague of Justinian left its mark on the world, killing up to a quarter of the population of the eastern Mediterranean and devastating the city of Constantinople, where at its height it was killing an estimated 5,000 people per day and eventually resulting in the deaths of 40% of the city's population. That was in that was in uh, 541 through 542. 25 million people in a year. 
That was the first part. That was part one of the bubonic plague. Now, the Black Death, the most famous recorded uh, event in history, was uh, went from 1346 uh, through 1353 uh, A.D. And this is a small paragraph, so I'm going to go ahead and read the entire thing. It killed over, it killed uh, from 75 to 200 million people. Uh, the Black Death did. From 1346 to 1353, an outbreak of the plague ravaged uh, Europe, Africa, and Asia with an estimated death toll between 75 and 200 million people. Thought to have originated in Asia, the plague most likely jumped continents via fleas, via the fleas living on rats. Well, true, that that is absolutely yes. how it freaking started because there were no kind of like health regulations back then and it had been so long since the plague of justinian that they probably even never gave uh the the bubonic plague a second thought and it's been hundreds and hundreds of years since then uh of uh jump continents via the fleas living on the rats that so frequently lived aboard the merchant ships Ports being major urban centers at the time were the perfect breeding ground for the rats and fleas, and thus the insidious bacterium flourished, devastating three continents in its wake. And that that's just a little bit less than a decade. And if if the, the Plague of Justinian had the timetable that the Black Death did, humanity probably would have been wiped off completely uh, off of the map. So, yeah, that's... Uh, a little bit of a uh, 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 material to you know. This is a podcast that you can fall asleep to. Uh, you know, it's, there's no reason to be. There's absolutely no reason to be paranoid. Uh, you're fine. Don't worry about it. And uh, keep consuming those antibacterial products and all that. Uh, I know Here's I'm not going to be sleeping tonight. To humanity, stupid people. That's the one we really have to look out for. And unfortunately, that's just the pandemic that we, that that's just naturally. Yeah, occurs. we already yeah. talked about climate change, so. <laughs> yeah. We... <laughs> All right. Uh, Robin, uh, where can they, where, where can they uh, see you? Where, where can they uh, check out your stuff? So they can find me on Twitter at Insight Alloy. And then I Twitch on, uh, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Insight Alloy. I'd also like to make a little call to action here for uh uh one of the founders of the scp wiki uh dr gears who was recently diagnosed with kidney cancer so oh, if if i see if scp is something that is important to you uh if it has been influential in your life at all uh, i'd recommend checking out his gofundme oh, he, definitely, he's definitely. been an inspiration to, to me and a lot of people all right, we'll go ahead and put that in the description of the video then if you guys want to go check that out and contribute, uh, feel free to do so. I really like that uh, that whole like little series of uh, a game. And I, you know what's crazy is that it's supposed to be, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's supposed to just be a game, right? But it went, it sort of like sprung its own legs and sort it, of it like It started as off. a 4chan post that was sort of like a fake uh, like government document. And it turned into like a, a flash fiction, like writing hobby. Oh, that that's so freaking cool! That's that's really the power of the internet. Like what you can do with just a little bit of time and a little bit of imagination, you know. But then again, you do it in order to find cool things like that. You have to wade through like a million other little turds before you can find something something nice. But when you once and you luckily get it, the moderation's great and the the content there is pretty pretty a one. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, Riley, where can they find you, man? On Twitter at Riley Tweets. On Twitch at twitch.tv slash Riley Streams. You can find mm, Pixels, Polygons, and Fun anywhere podcasts are found. Pokemon Variety Hour uh, on Stitcher or Spotify. And the big one, the Riley Podcast Mega Feed where all of my independently produced podcasts are now housed after my exit from YouTube. <laughs> my, 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 my golden goose, if you will, largest issue in the galaxy has finally returned my most popular podcast by far. Hopefully that'll bring some people to the feed. Um, largest issue in the galaxy recently returned. You can find the Riley Neen movie review podcast and all that shit. 
Just search the Riley Podcast Mega Feed on Stitcher or Spotify or go to anchor.fm slash Riley Mega Feed. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Mo Diggity uh, at Happy Good Boy 420 on Twitter and uh, Mo Diggity 42 on YouTube. And uh, thanks for coming out. I really appreciate it. Until then, ta ta.